you might be familiar with this. Or this. Or even this. But what do they all have in common? Each costume worn by these pop stars in these noteworthy performances were inspired by the weird and wonderful designs of the eccentric Bauhaus icon Oskar Schlemmer. Oskar Schlemmer was born September 4, 1888 in Stuttgart, Germany. He was a painter, sculptor, choreographer and designer known for his abstract yet precise depictions of the human form and his avant-garde ballet productions. In 1920, Schlemmer was invited by Walter Gropius to teach at the Bauhaus in Weimar. Making significant contributions across several departments, Schlemmer made the most impact in the stage workshop. His most notable work was the 1922 Triadic Ballet, in which Schlemmer choreographed and designed the outlandish costumes. The ballet was a geometric exploration of time and space. It was revolutionary as well as a reflection of Germany's post-war preoccupation with technology. The Bauhaus is widely known for its iconic designs and contributions to the art world, and their concepts extend across different art forms and crafts, including dance and theatre. Encompassing the Bauhaus values of modernity, geometry, experimentation and functionality, Oskar Schlemmer's triadic ballet explored the human body in space, accomplished with his architectural costume designs. Being a member of the Bauhaus, which emphasised functionality, Schlemmer wanted to invent costumes that would get rid of useless decorations like tiaras and tutus. Instead, Schlemmer wanted to create costumes that would restrict the dancers so they didn't have complete freedom of movement. Influenced by Heinrich von Kleist's essay on puppet theatre published in 1810, Schlemmer found it a pivotal and inspiring piece of work. Dramatists during the period were seeking to overcome what they considered debased illusionism of the realist theatre, which had dominated the second half of the 19th century. The puppet was therefore viewed as a vehicle of stylization and abstraction on stage. Schlemmer sought to convey the mechanical movements of the puppet that von Kleist valued above even the greatest human dancers in the triadic ballet. He thought in terms of abstracting the human body into regular geometric shapes, suggesting a simplified form of a puppet. The square of the ribcage, the circle of the belly, the cylinder of the arms and the circle of the head. Juliet Koss clarifies in her essay Bauhaus Theatre of Human Dolls, the triadic ballet presents a visual cacophony of bulbous forms and geometric shapes which encase the bodies of eight performers, suppressing their individual identities and personalities. Their limbs and torsos are held at awkward angles, their gestures seem to have been inspired by the movements of modern machinery. In his 1924 essay, Man and the Art Figure, Sherman discusses the four basic sets of laws that determine how the costume carries out its transforming role, highlighting two key ideas, abstraction and metamorphosis. The first being laws of surrounding cubicle space so that the costume makes the body become ambulant architecture. Secondly, the marionette with an egg-shaped head, vase-shaped torso and club arms and legs. The third is the laws of motion of the human body in space, including rotation and direction, so that the body becomes a technical organism. And the final law is the metaphysical forms of expression in which various parts of the human body are abstracted shapes, resulting in dematerialization. Some costumes had asymmetrical features which had an effect on how the dancers moved. With a huge dominant right leg, this dancer took great big lunging steps. Another example of how the costumes affected the way the dancers moved was a female dancer who wore a round skirt and a matching knob-like hat. Her choreography called for her to move in circles, demonstrating the trajectory of a geometric shape in motion.
With geometric abstraction in both the costumes and the choreography, there was a distinct emphasis on mechanical qualities. However, the critic Eric Michaud convincingly made the argument that Schlemmer does not want to create robots like Depero or Ivo Panagi. Rather, he wants to constrain the body with the costume. According to Schlemmer, the seemingly violated body achieves new expressive forms of dance the more it fuses with the costume. In their movement, the dancers breathe life into the artist's shapes and space, offering experience, touch and feel as they close the gap between the abstract and the human. Schlemmer saw that in the modern world during the Weimar Republic, there was two main currents, the mechanised man as a machine and the body as mechanism, and the primal impulses which linger in the depths of our creative urges. Schlemmer claimed that the choreography of geometry and dance offered a synthesis, the Dionysian and the emotional origins of dance become strict and Apollonian in its final form. He stated, I vacillate between two styles, two worlds, two attitudes towards life, but mediates between the two, posing creative responses to their coexistence. This concept is reflected in the progression from the initial lemon yellow scene, reflecting a cheerful and burlesque mood, continuing through to a pink stage that provides a festive ceremonial backdrop for the dancers. Lastly, on a black stage with a spotlight on them, the final scene intends to depict the mystical and transcendental end to the performance. Although Schlemmer's triadic ballet is one of the most significant productions to emerge from the stage workshop at the Bauhaus, it took some convincing of others before he could begin his work. Schlemmer recognised, given the absence of opportunities for building due to the economic crisis in post-war Germany, the illusionary world of the theatre offers an outlet for those who could only dream of creating modern architecture. Fortunately, Gropius shared his idea and saw the structural similarities between building and the stage. Lothar Schreyer was appointed as the first teacher of the workshop, as Schlemmer was already a master of form at the Bauhaus, teaching in wall painting, stone sculpture and the life drawing workshops. Schreyer only taught for two years before the aesthetic tastes of the student and staff members changed from his expressionist approach to a more practical and rationalist attitude. In 1923, Schlemmer took over Schreyer's position. In the same year, an exhibition took place at the Bauhaus under the same title as their motto, Art and Technology, A New Unity, in which Schlemmer presented the triadic ballet in Weimar, and as he puts it, it was a big success. After exploring the costumes in Oskar Schlemmer's triadic ballet in theory, I wanted to gain a practical understanding of how the dancers may have felt whilst wearing these architectural structures. Using the same materials as Schlemmer to develop the costumes, with paper mache, metal wires, padded material and cardboard, I recreated three of Schlemmer's designs. Two costumes from the yellow scene and from the final scene, the dancer dressed in a metallic wire structure. Following the third law of motion, the spinning top costume had an even weight spread around the dancer's waist, making it easy for her to move but harder to stop. It definitely makes you more aware of your surroundings because you have to move in a specific area in a specific way in the costume. The character that carried out the transforming role of Law 1 had limited movements, still slow and heavy. The costume, like you really have to exaggerate your movements. The final costume was similar to the first one, yet was much more technically delicate. The metal material would only stay in position if you moved with enough momentum. The Bauhaus legacy means that performances like the Triadic Ballet are always being reinterpreted and renewed. In 2018, Bauhaus graduate Pavel Kopashevich created an interactive version of the metal wire costume, with light motion sensors attached to it. By furthering Schlemmer's concept of industrialization, artists today like Karpashevich are able to develop and explore the relationship of human as a machine in modern reinterpretations of Schlemmer's original ideas.